Hello everyone. Carbon chemistry part 3. In part 1 and part 2, we have seen type, structure, properties, all these things about carbons. And it will be convenient for you if you watch that videos first and then you start this part 3 video. And you can click on the playlist link for all the videos under carbon chemistry, just which is uh, appearing on the screen, top right corner. Okay. Methods for generation of carbons. Now, carbon itself is very reactive in nature. That means it is having high energy content. So, it means they must be synthesized from some high energy precursor. Or if it is not high energy precursor, if somehow it is stable, then we have to apply extra energy because we are preparing carbons, which is itself very high energy. So either it is made from high energy precursor or we have to provide extra energy from some external sources. Now photochemical reaction which is light induced reaction we know that they are high energy reaction. So obviously this type of reaction we can use for the synthesis of carbons. Now all the reactions that are used for generation of carbon we can uh, classify under two broad categories. One is elimination reaction, another one is fragmentation reaction. So for elimination reaction, the two main reactions we will discuss today and fragmentation that will be discussed in another video. Fine. And mostly it is seen that uh, they are usually formed, form precursor by the loss of some small molecule and stable molecule. Fine. So these are some points that are important for general to keep it in mind for generation of carbons. So the first method for elimination because that is the topic of discussion. Fragmentation we will not discuss today that will be in another video. So under elimination the first reaction we are going to discuss that is alpha elimination or you can also call it 1-1 elimination. Now why it is uh, having this type of name alpha or 1-1 because alpha elimination means the two groups or atoms that will be removed, that will be removed from the same carbon. So you can call it alpha elimination. That is right hand side there is carbon by the removal of these two groups or atoms. It can be called as alpha elimination because it is removed from the same carbon or it can also be called 1-1 one, one elimination. Remember if it is 1-2 elimination that means X and Y they are present on carbon number 1 and carbon number 2. But in this case they are uh, removed from the same carbon so that is why we are calling it 1-1 one, one elimination. So here we have taken chloroform molecule CHCl3. Now in chloroform because of this presence of 3 chlorine this hydrogen is very acidic. So in presence of strong base HO- this hydrogen being acidic it will be removed and there is formation of carbonyl like this. Now the next step this is the carbonyl, negative charge over carbon. There will be loss of Cl- minus from this carbonyl. And ultimately, there will be formation of dichlorocarbene. Because there are two substituents that are attached to carbon carbon is chlorine. And this chlorine is the living group. So first, there is removal of H. And second, there is removal of Cl. So it is overall removal of hydrogen and halogen. So we can call this reaction as if it is dehydrohalogenation that is for the formation of carbon. So in presence of strong base you can take chloroform CHCl3 or you can take bromoform. In that case H and Br will be removed as a whole. So it is dehydrohalogenation and ultimately we are getting carbon, dichlorocarbon. Now as this is reactive intermediate and if you uh, want to use this carbon for some further reaction. So this is basically generation of carbon that we are discussing but we generate them so that they can react with some other substrate and as these are very highly reactive species so it is not that we are preparing it we can keep it for some time no directly we have to use so that is why the next example that we are going to see it is cyclopropane synthesis which is uh, that if you use this type of carbon in this reaction that is the best method for synthesis of cyclopropane. So here we have started from chloroform CHCl3 in presence of strong base tertiary butoxide 
potassium tertiary butoxide that is formation of dichlorocarbin and now in C2 in the reaction medium directly we are adding this cycloalkene in this case we have taken uh, that is cyclohexane moiety and there is CC double bond and this CC double bond it is reacting with this uh, chloro uh, from generated carbon carbon ultimately we are getting this type of cyclopropane cyclopropane means three member three okay and here we have some substituents because already two chlorine substituents are present now any other alkene also we can take so up to this part it is actually generation of carbon the next part that you are seeing that is uh, actually application of this carbon fine so this is alpha elimination or 1 1 elimination by which we can generate carbon carbon now sometimes we can face some problems in this reaction so what is the problem suppose the substrate that you are using just take the previous example you are using cyclohexene so if the substrate that we are using it is not uh, very stable towards base because in the reaction medium we are also using strong base potassium tertiary butoxide we have used now if this substrate is very say, base sensitive then we cannot use uh, this type of carbon that is as we are using we are adding the substrate in situ it is not that we are first preparing the carbon then we are isolating it then we are doing the second step no in the same medium you are adding the substrate so in the medium already there is some base and if you are adding this base sensitive substrate we have to uh, face some problems so as carbons are very unstable they must be formed in presence of compound they are intended to react to it okay so if this compound which we are we want to take part in reaction with carbon if it is base sensitive there will be problem so there is some alternative for dichlorocarbon what is the alternative we can generate them by another method also that is you can generate uh, carbon you have you will form the carbonyl remember ccl3 minus that is the carbonyl this carbonyl you can also make by some another method where we will not use any base and it is by loss of carbon dioxide molecule so this is decarboxylation of sodium trichloroacetate this is sodium trichloroacetate remember the structure of acetic acid ch3coh if all the three hydrogens of ch3 group of acetic acid acetic acid is ch3 coh if you remove all these three hydrogens with chlorine now it is trichloroacetic acid now the hydrogen of acetic acid if you are removing and if there is sodium salt it is sodium salt of trichloroacetic acid or we can say sodium trichloroacetate when we are heating it now this negative charge it is making c double bond o and this cc bond will be broken and as a result this part is removed in the form of co2 and ccl3 is removed in the form of carbonyl it is basically carbonyl there is sodium ion so that is it is neutral but actually it is ccl3 minus and here co2 is removed without the bonding electrons co2 is neutral and here the ccl3 that is generated remember in the last case how we have generated it by removal of acidic proton from chloroform but in this case we are using some different method where base is not used and here chlorine is uh, leaving with the bonding electrons so this chlorine is leaving with the bonding electrons this bond is basically broken and that is why carbon is generated okay so this is the alternative method next uh, elimination method that is we are discussing elimination under which one one elimination is done next one is simon smith reaction it is not possible to synthesize methylene carbon by alpha elimination method that is a method we have just seen and methylene means it is simple simplest car uh, carbon that is possible so methylene we cannot generate because we are removing here acetic hydrogen and for acetic hydrogen there must be some electron withdrawing group so that is why you have started from chloroform three chlorines are there one chlorine is removed one h is removed ultimately we are getting ccl2 but if you want to make ch2 carbon then these two hydrogens they are not electron withdrawing so we cannot use alpha elimination method okay so we have to use some other method so for this generation the most commonly used method is the reaction of alkene 
that is it is actually the substrate with which the carbene will react that is the application part but directly we will use it so that is it is written here as if it is the reaction of alkenes with diiodomethane methane is ch4 if you remove two hydrogen with and if you replace it with two iodine the structure will be like this ch2i2 so this is diiodomethane in presence of zinc so this is the reaction zn or copper that is uh, zn can also be taken or zinc copper couple can be taken and ch2i2 diiodomethane now here carbon structure you cannot see because direct reaction is shown here this is alkene we are getting cyclopropane so this ch2 is basically coming from ch2i2 and this is concerted method that is all the steps are happening simultaneously so that is why the concerted step is shown but we will also see step by step what is actually happening here that is a mechanism so during this reaction methylene carbene is not formed in the free state so that is why uh, we have not written here the carbene structure okay but the reaction is occurring through carbenoid now what is carbenoid this is something new we are hearing so carbenoid is something which is not exactly carbene but it is like carbene so that is why it is carbenoid so what is carbenoid it is carbene like chemical species but having properties and reactivity that is differing from the free carbene itself so it is not exactly carbene it is carbene like but remember it can act as a source of carbon that is same type of reaction you can also expect from them that you expect from carbon okay so general structure for carbenoid you can consider these two pictures so here we have carbon two r groups are attached and there is metal moiety it may be also associated with some ligands and then there is x not necessarily it is halogen it may be nitrogen also so x is basically it will be removed and the metal part that will also be removed so the carbene will be mainly generated from this portion okay here the blue portion so we will see now the step wise what is happening here so diiodomethane in presence of zinc copper couple in presence of ether there is formation of this type of carbenoid iodine ch2 zn i you can see all the bonds and this is also known as simon smith re reagent because the name of the reaction is simon smith and if you compare this structure with the structure that we have just seen in the previous slide here these two are it is actually hydrogen m is zn i x is as if iodine so you can find similarity this is h this is also h so this is carbenoid structure i ch2 zn i next step is okay let's see what is written here ch2i2 reacts with zn copper alloy to produce an intermediate like this which is actually the carbenoid and it is also called methylene transfer agent because in this molecule this part will be actually uh, the carbene which is a required part okay rest of the part will be removed in the form of zn i2 so the next step is you have taken some alkene where different substituents may be present it is the general structure now in presence of this carbene here cyclopropane moiety is formed so see here one of these bond will be broken so there is dotted line then the bond between carbon and zinc that will also be broken there is a dotted line the bond between carbon and iodine that will also be broken and the bond between this iodine and the zinc there will be a newly uh, new bond will be generated okay so this is the newly generated bond so all the newly generated bond and the bonds which is to be broken all are in dotted uh, line okay so now you can see the structure i have erased all the markings so this is concerted in the next step there is removal of zn i2 so this part will be removed and the carbon that is this ch2 it is basically coming from this simon smith reagent okay so later in the second step this uh, product is unstable i mean this intermediate it is unstable it transform into finally zn i2 which is basically removed and it transferred this methylene so methylene is transferred to the double bond ultimately we are getting cyclopropyl so these two are the important methods under one one elimination of uh, or alpha elimination in the next video we will see uh, the reactions uh, under fragmentation category okay 
So I hope now you have some idea about the methods by which we can generate carbon. But this is not the end. We'll also see some more methods in the next video. Thank you for watching. I will meet you in the next video.